Come on, baby, I'm down on one knee. I carved our names on a Halloween tree. You write about Earthlings going to Mars, and I write about... Look, what, what? Why are you interrupting us? Why didn't you tell me they were here? Help. Welcome to Teacup for One. I carved our names on a Halloween tree. My name is Matt and I have two degrees. So, who's been to Disneyland? Not me, but if you have been to Disneyland, especially during the Halloween season over the last like 13 years or so, you might have noticed a particularly beautifully odd tree in Frontierland. A tree adorned with beautiful orange colored lights and strung with jack-o'-lanterns. My question to you is what does this tree have in common with Fahrenheit 451, Spaceship Earth, and this music video? Come on, baby, I'm down on one knee. I carved our names on a Halloween tree. That's right. The prolific author, Ray Bradbury. You're a prolific author, Ray Bradbury. Because that's not just any old tree decorated with twinkle lights and adorned with hand-painted jack-o'-lanterns. That, my friends, is a Halloween tree. Now you might have heard of The Halloween Tree. It's one of Ray Bradbury's novels from the 1970s and in 1993 Hanna-Barbera adapted it into a made-for-TV film. And Ray Bradbury actually won an Emmy Award for his screenplay adaptation of The Halloween Tree. You won an Emmy Award for the screenplay adaptation of Halloween Tree. Yeah, I feel like the Hanna-Barbera cartoon has just always existed. Like, it was always there in the background of all of our childhoods. I'm speaking for all of us right now. But I decided for the Vlogtober movie marathon to actually sit down and watch it from start to finish. And the verdict? It is so much better than I expected. Like, kind of. I mean, admittedly, the animation is like, it's just average, it's not bad, but it's on par with what you would get on TV in the 90s. And Leonard Nimoy is pretty campy as the literal Grim Reaper, but the story and the writing are amazing. It's about a group of kids who go out trick-or-treating on Halloween, but discover that one of their best friends has been rushed to the hospital. So they try to go looking for him, but instead they come across Mr. Monshroud, who let's just call a spade a spade is death. And they spend all of Halloween night traveling through time and across the world with Mr. Monshroud, again, death. And he shows them all the cultural traditions from ancient Egypt through to France, through to Mexico that influenced modern Halloween while teaching kids about humanity's complicated relationship with death throughout time. I don't want to give too much away because I do highly recommend that you seek it out and give it a watch. And even if you don't like it, it's only an hour of your time, which is not that much compared to giving away a year of your life. No spoilers. But once you get past the campy animation, at its core, there is a beautiful, heartbreaking story. And this movie just combines all the things that I love. It's got time travel, it's got cool history, it's got an emotionally grounded story, and it's all tied together by Halloween. What more could you want? Actually, while I was watching it, all I could think was, this script is so good, this deserves like a big budget feature film remake. And then lo and behold, I hopped onto Google and I discovered that a few months ago they announced we are getting a new movie based on the Halloween tree. And I bet you're thinking, oh, that's why there's a Halloween tree at Disneyland. Disney must be producing it. No, no, they're not. So then I bet your next thought is, well, Matt, that's all well and good and you're so handsome and insightful, but if the original film was produced by Hanna-Barbera and the remake has nothing to do with Disney, then why does Disneyland, of all places, have the Halloween tree? And the simple answer is because Ray Bradbury wanted one. The slightly more complicated answer is that Ray Bradbury and Walt Disney had a very strong friendship. They only connected a few years before Walt died, but they bonded instantly by all accounts because they were both fans of each other. Yeah, Ray Bradbury 
was a huge Disney fan, which I just found out and that makes me love him even more. By the time they met, Ray Bradbury was already firmly established in his career as a writer, so he never worked with Disney in a full-time capacity as an Imagineer or anything, but from what I understand, he would visit Walt quite frequently and he made a lot of contributions and suggestions towards uh, projects for the Disney parks that were apparently so valuable that Walt allowed him to go into the Disney animation archives and like, just take artwork for himself. I want to be gifted artwork from the animation archives. Eventually, Ray Bradbury did work with the Walt Disney Company in a more official capacity, uh, probably most notably when the Walt Disney Studios adapted Something Wicked This Way Comes into a film, but Ray Bradbury was also responsible for helping conceptualize Epcot's spaceship Earth, both the structure and the attraction. He actually wrote the original concept script for the Spaceship Earth attraction. Now, I don't actually think much or any of the text he wrote for the concept script is still a part of the attraction, except for maybe the words Spaceship Earth, but his text was more along the lines of Become, know, understand. Your life is yours to own and be. The world is yours to shape and change. The stars are yours as just reward. And I mean, that's nice. But how does it really compare to the beautifully crafted words that we now have Dame Judi Dench performing with such winning lines like, Remember how easy it was to learn your ABCs? Like the Venetians. They invented them. Regardless, still, his contribution to the Walt Disney Company and specifically the Walt Disney Parks was so significant that in 2007, the powers that be decided to recognize his dream of having the Halloween tree become a permanent part of Disneyland. They dubbed an oak tree in Frontierland the Halloween tree. They made it official by giving it a plaque that is there year round acknowledging Ray Bradbury's contributions to the Walt Disney Company. And every year around Halloween time, they fill it with those beautiful orange lights and hang jack-o'-lanterns from its branches as the ultimate tribute to Ray Bradbury and his undying love of all things Disney and all things Halloween. And if you ask me, that has to be the second most beautiful tribute to Ray Bradbury that anyone has ever put out into the world. With the most beautiful tribute being this. What more can I say? For now, friends, this concludes yet another episode of Teacup 401. Now, let me know in the comment section down below, have you ever seen or read The Halloween Tree? And if not, what are you waiting for? And you know what's coming. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, but you wanna follow me for the rest of my Halloween movie marathon, or be the first to know when November hits and I go back to making videos about Funkos or the Walt Disney Seaverse, make sure you subscribe, it's super easy. All you have to do is click on my face. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, everyone. My name is Matt and I have two degrees and that's the T cup for one. Bleep me, Ray Bradbury.